Welcome everybody. Thank you once again for being there. This is Rafa with Mystic Times. Today I have the great pleasure, the great honor and the great um, happiness of having my dear Brian Scott with me for a great conversation. We're going to probably talk a little bit about reality creation, uh, maybe some reality transurfing, which I've, I've recently started uh, not reading, but listening to the audiobook. I found on, on YouTube this, this guy that has a very, very interesting voice and some sound on the, on the background. And I got like very, very hooked on the book. And I had already listened to it uh, from, from your, your readings of chapters and your descriptions of them and uh, found it interesting. But this, this recent, uh, this recent time, turn or time that I've read it or listened to it, it was uh, very eye-opening and I understood a lot more. So that's something that just <laughs> came up to my, to my mind that we might talk about also. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, and you just mentioned before we started, you were speaking about uh, the law of one. That's something else that we that I, I've discovered through you as well, and and I find it so interesting and so so empowering as well. But the the main thing that that you inspire me to 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 look into and to continue um, discovering is about self. Self-actualization, I think they call it sometimes, or, or learning more about oneself and, and discovering what, what can you create in your life? How can you make uh, your dreams come true? Uh, and, and especially through the use of meditation in many cases it's with you. So, well, I don't know, it's really, really an honor to, to have you back, Brian. Um, super excited and, and nervous <laughs> to talk to you. So how are you? <laughs> I'm honored to be here, Rafa. Thank you for having me on. It's uh, it's awesome. You've been doing some great work. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, you you're really one of the people who inspired me to 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 do this this podcast. I mean, I actually started a little bit before, but one of the first guys. It, it was like at the same time that I discovered you. It was around that time that I started doing this, and one of the first guys that I thought, oh, I want to have him on the on the show to to speak. I remember, of, yeah. Yeah, you were, I don't, I'm going to check later uh, what episode you, you were on, but like six or seven, something like that. Yeah, um, and, I remember, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it was a very, a very nice conversation. Uh, I don't know, you really inspire me. You're like, I don't know how you do it. I, I like try to imagine in my mind, like your schedule and how, how tight it must be and like a, a very well-oiled machine or something like that. Uh, but all, all the, the content that you're sharing, it's just, just amazing, uh, a great wealth of, of information and, and not just information for the mind, you know, but also all the, the meditations that you share, all the, 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 the different perspectives, you know, that really, I don't know, you, well, you must, <laughs> you must be like, um, what's the word, like, uh, flabbergasted or whatever, I don't know the, the right word about the, the, the success, you know, that your channel has and the, the impact that it's had on, on so many people, right? Well, I'm super grateful. You, you never really know, as you know, how you're going to do on uh, when you start posting your thoughts and ideas and sharing your teachings and things like that. So you don't really know how it's going to be uh, you know, responded to. And so it's an honor whenever I see uh, that people watch my videos. It's an honor every single, if it's even, if even a single person watches one of my videos, I'm just like blown away. As a big YouTube viewer, somebody that loves to watch YouTube, um, it's one of those things that I've really enjoyed uh, just, you know, being able to, to share what I've learned and as I teach, I'm learning myself, you know, and so I, it's um, when I do interviews like this, people always comment that I, I, I put a lot of material and it doesn't feel like that, you know, I'm, I'm just um, I'm spending time having fun um, reading a, a couple hours a day and, and um, I'm, I'm able to share it. So it works out perfectly. So, yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, uh, so, so many uh, strange or not strange, but like a kind of relatively unknown books from from a couple I don't know, decades ago, or 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 maybe even from from centuries ago, the, yeah. or or the, from the previous century, and and they have that's amazing how how connected you know the, those those people were from like I don't know guys like um, uh, or, or girls like um, Florence Florence Kobashin, you mm -hmm. know one one of them 
um, I don't know, uh, another one that I really like is uh, Dr. Joseph Murphy. Yeah. Um, there's, there's just so many really amazing authors that are touching on what a lot of people feel like is on the cutting edge of consciousness now in this moment. And it's amazing to think these people were talking about this stuff 100 years ago, 60 years ago in some cases, yeah. and, you know, hundreds of years ago in some other cases. Uh, you know, we talk about William Blake, you know, um, so, so many different amazing authors that were touching on this, that were trying to tell us. And I kind of, I think those are the modern day prophets. You know, talk about prophets in the Bible, but a lot of these authors were on the cutting edge telling us this is going to be how it is. This is how you use your mind. Your mind is powerful. So, uh, you know, the Joseph Murphy stuff is resonates with me right now. The Neville Goddard stuff resonates with me right now. All of it is is powerful and interesting to me. And I continually find new and amazing authors uh, but they are not in the mainstream of, you know, when you go on fiction and you walk into Barnes and Noble or, you know, go on Amazon and see what books are selling. Uh, they're still, even though I'm, you know, they're popular on my channel. These are books that are still, you know, not in the mainstream. People are not talking about them. You know, The Secret was popular and sort of brought some of these ideas in the mainstream. But slowly and carefully, we're starting to see some of these ideas bubble up from hundreds and, and decades ago. Um, into our modern thought and I think it's changing the world that that's a really great thing if my podcast can at least get somebody hey I'm Joseph, Joseph Mercy is pretty awesome and they're going out and, and then checking out his other material then it's working because you know I, I, I'm still learning so much and it's amazing how much I have to learn when I read these authors yeah um, it feels like like you know secret societies uh, I, I've always wondered you know what is the secret that they're keeping uh, is there just one secret? Do different societies keep a different secret from each other, or or is it many secrets within each? And and you know, recently or 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 lately, one one of the things that I'm thinking is that this this exact thing of reality creation feels like probably one of the central secrets of most of these societies. Maybe they have some some other particular thing of oh yeah this this guy from the Bible he was actually something something related to us or or he created this group or or this other uh, alien race created something or, but in the like in common what I think I'm finding or what I'm intuiting is that the the one commonality between all between all secret societies for for just to to say some something as an example, feels to be that we are able to create our reality and then there's like different methods of how to do it. It's true. Um, I, I don't like to get overly um, obsessed with what conspiracy theories. And so, you know, that stuff, as we learn from the law of one, can kind of pull you away spiritually from the, from the positive spiritual path. But at the same time, uh, I do think that some of those secret societies shared this information because a lot of people in, in certain decades and eras weren't ready for it. It was, it was too profound. Uh, we relate everything to what we're modern thinking is, you know, as we have social media and we, and information is at our fingertips. But back in the day, some of that information uh, was, was mind bending and groundbreaking and, they, and for them to properly teach it, it had to be taught in secret societies and in and, and, and those kind of formats. Because first of all, it was uh, for most of the general religious thinking, uh, there was resistance and you could be treated, uh, you know, as being anti-Christian or, you know, anti whatever the religion is at that time. So a lot of times they were forced to go underground and talk about the power of these teachings without being marked by the government or society as, uh, you know, you know, whatever the, the proper word for it is, as antithetical to that religious thinking at the time. Um, so I think there are some secret societies that had good intentions. Some of them were were secretive because people, it was just over people's heads. People would not even come close to understanding it. And then you could get a small group together and, and really talk about it and, 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 and experiment with these ideas. Um, and they got pretty good at it and it was easier to teach and learn about this stuff in a secret society setting, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. I'm the same way. Yeah. For a long time, the, the conspiracy theories were very tasty and very delicious for me. 
but <laughs> it comes a point you know when when they start being more like detrimental to your to your well-being in in that you become too uh, too deep into the paranoia of of somebody is uh, trying or, or or actually controlling your life and mm -hmm. the whole point of this is that it doesn't even matter if that is happening because you exactly. have the power to actually create your own life and to and and it's 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 weird and and paradoxical but that's the nature of reality how you can be um, not touched by by whatever anyone could or could not be doing in secret and at mm -hmm. the same time somebody else could be you know how how we can live in this in this in this same world but at the same time we each have our own our own thing you know how for example uh, talking about uh, the um, the, the 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 events of the past you know from 2020 yeah you know, i never got any sick i actually i actually have been the healthiest i've ever been in my life mm -hmm. didn't get sick in two years it was like i was in perfect health and i still am and so at the same time i wouldn't say ah so therefore the conspiracy uh, actually there is nothing going on there was no uh, no bug or or the people who say they got it got nothing no i would say that in my own world because of how i i don't know how i how i present myself or, or receive the world you know i created this kind of bubble around me you know mm -hmm. that that it's it's possible to live in a in a in peace while at the same time your neighbor is is in absolute uh, uh, depression and paranoia and worry because it's true that's that's how we we create we create up until the it's like this this fear around us this aura you know and when it touches somebody else's and and it doesn't allow the same vibration it just leaves them be and they can totally fall into whatever rabbit hole they want yeah this, Ab this, yeah absolutely you know and it's uh as they teach us in, in as jim mccarty mentions in 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 a, in a couple of preludes in the law of one material uh if they started asking about conspiracy questions to raw in the law of one eventually raw would have just slowly said hey maybe you don't need to ask that that's depolarizing warning slowly and eventually backing away and then somebody else will come along and say that they're raw and they'll give all the information that they're asking about evil aliens and lizard people and evil cabals and elites and all that stuff you know uh and what what happens is it may not be true but it's all paranoia it's all fear and it all pushes you to service to self and so uh it's very subtle and so if you believe in these conspiracy theories if you're worried about it if you're posting about it on facebook if you're posting and, and you're and, and you're um defriending people because of whatever conspiracy theory that you're buying into even if it's true what ends up happening is that you are separating yourself and you're treating yourself as an entity that is separate from the creator when we understand that all the the elites the cabal the conspiracies going on are you it's a big deal and so you know if, if we if we want to and we amplify the fear and whatever message so um there's always truth in everything but we still create our reality and as we focus on whatever is happening in the world of course there's there's groups that are evil because that's the nature of the mind but we are not here to amplify it we're here to give people hope this is what is expected we're we're going to have evil groups and people trying to separate and people trying to create fear but we have a role every word that we say is important so if we can provoke hope and optimism bring people together and teach lessons of love in the moment then um that stuff doesn't become important and i know there are people listening to this that have bought into many of those conspiracies because it's fun it's mm -hmm. fun to talk about these conspiracy theories um some of them are completely crazy and make you worry oh there's there's evil groups that are taking children as prisoners the worst possible thing that you can yeah. imagine right they're taking children's blood and eating their brains right um and so if you focus on that and make that your focus then you're treating another group as evil and suddenly you're fearful you're scared you're putting an energy out there of fear and 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 and, and you're you're creating your reality at the same time so um that you know that's best to i try to avoid that and i still find myself getting caught up in it um and i'm still you know it's still learning 
Yeah, 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 definitely. The same goes for me. But I've, I've come to realize that it's useful up to a point, like I was saying before, but then yeah. it becomes a, a weapon of, of, of control, actually. You know, and it's like you think that because you are informed of the latest conspiracy or the latest trend in right. conspiracies, that you are safer or it kind of makes you feel safe because, okay, so I know about it. I've been there uh, of thinking that way. Mm -hmm. But there comes a certain point where if you are in that frequency, you can be fed lies and, and you think, oh, I know about this new one. And, and you start sort of manifesting those lies into your world and into reality. Like exactly. you, 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 you know what I mean? Exactly. You're, you're yeah. exactly right. So, so yeah, like yeah. what happened recently in America, there there was the Georgia Guidestones, which talked about, you know, reducing the population. And there's a big group that were like, we've got to destroy it because of these Guidestones. They're linking it to the, the, the energetic lines and the ley lines and, and they're, they're making an imprint on our planet and they're going to cut down the population. And people went in and blew those stones up. And you know what? They're just words some dude wrote down on some stones a while back. And that, you know, and that created fear. You have you have governor candidates in Georgia um, saying that that's their main, uh, you know, the main thing that they're trying to do politically. We're going to destroy the Guidestones, right? People are afraid and screaming about it. And what happens to those people? Those people are are putting out, or broadcasting a mm -hmm. negative frequency. And look, it, it resulted in violence and, and whatever. If you see something that's like that, a conspiracy type of situation, ignore it. Yeah, it will not affect you. I, it's not going to affect you. It has nothing to do with it. There's nothing that's going to benefit you with the knowledge of it. And there's nothing that's going to affect you either good or bad. It's not going to help you out. Um, what uh, uh, focus on the love. If there's some way to bring love into the situation, then that's it. And it, when, as I continue to focus on the love of whatever situation, I learn so much more. So yeah, it's that the importance. It's the importance level that we place on this stuff. So that's all it is. Yeah, that is exactly the the answer. I think we tend to think we are the, we either have to be for or against stuff, or right or or maybe okay. I I can be for the positive, but I also want to be against the negative, and and it just doesn't work. But you you bring up a, a good point: the, the the idea of importance and the idea of ignoring those things and just. Uh, allowing through your filters, allowing into your reality those things that you feel empower you. And, and, and this reminds me of, of reality transurfing, which, I, as I said, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of fresh in, into the material once again. And, and it, it, that's the, the answer I think that he gives about pendulums or about like uh, exactly. mass, mass mental uh, uh, disturbances in the, in the force. It's just ignore those things because they, the best thing. The, the best they can do for you is is nothing. So nothing. So yeah, why, anytime why a bunch of people, yeah, anytime a bunch of people focus on something, you're giving your energy all the time. Every time you put look at something, you're giving it energy. You're, you're, you're just an energy giver all the time. So when you open up your phone and you're focusing on whatever pendulum it is, if it's about, you know, um, that virus, or if it's about something else, you're giving that energy. And it's not just the image or the picture or the article you're giving energy. It's an actual um, structure that starts to form in, in metaphysically. And the more energy that's given to it, eventually it becomes conscious, like an egregore that's talked about in occult writings. And so this conscious which is similar to what they talk about in the law of one when it's a social memory complex but this is uh, a social memory complex it's an energetic being that's just created by the thoughts and so then it becomes this self-feeding vampiric thing um and it's taking your energy now we it's we can't avoid it we can't necessarily avoid it you know what i mean we can't avoid the pendulums of the world because your family's a pendulum you're a pendulum everything's but you can you can not focus on negative destructive pendulums that are taking your energy away and in many cases as they talk about in transurfing pulling you into a different reality that's the the choice of the pendulum the pendulum wants you to go into this other reality that is their choice that helps them out and they might try to make you think that your goal in life is to please the pendulum 
when it has nothing to do with that. So we have all these people that are sort of zombies of these pendulums get, that get pulled in because they think the pendulum is telling them, they're telling me my goal. They're telling me the thing I need to do. Um, the pendulum doesn't know anything about love. It only knows about energy. So, and it's not even a part of us when we are not the pendulum, it's just energy. So um, it, it's fascinating to me, but it's something to be aware of. And it's, the more you become aware of it, um, the less energy you give away. And you find you actually have more energy for yourself when you don't give those things energy. Definitely. Mm. So creating, creating positive pendulums, right? That's, right. that's like the, the, the next step. Uh, maybe so pendulums all right so since we're on, on the subject you know um like we it, it's it's great that we were just speaking about the the conspiracies and and right how, how valuable or not they can be for us and now we're going kind of a, a next step is okay so in general the what what maybe sometimes we can call conspiracies but it can also be uh Uh, like you say, uh, uh, a football team or a, a, right. a particular uh, political ideology or spiritual or religious or uh, so many things, focusing on, on any of those things, it, it can have a, a detrimental effect. But what I'm trying to, to get at, which is kind of hard for me to put into words right now, right. is that we, it feels like, uh, on the one hand, when you start looking at these things, it feels okay, so this is like something demonic and, and, right. and we fall again into, oh, so this is something that is so powerful that I need to ignore it because it's powerful. But it's actually how to put it. It's like, instead of thinking, oh, it's demonic, it's thinking, oh, it's just demonic. You know, like- It's, it, it's just a wave. It's just like saying a wave on the ocean is yeah. demonic. It's not, it's just a natural um, part of, of nature and energy. Uh, as people give energy to something, it grows. Um, so if you were to metaphysically lift the veil and see the pendulums, it's just as I, when I was talking to Frederick Dotson, he had, I asked him about the concept of pendulums and he, you know, has not really read the transurfing, but he talks about parallel universes of self. And he said, it's just waves. And so you become aware of your interaction and the general energetic movement of ideas and thoughts and you you can avoid them you can become a part of them but you are the neutral observer aware of this dynamic interchange between your attention and energy and so it can be good or bad um some people can use pendulums in a positive manner uh but in most cases it's just the awareness of what energy you're giving to something and how it's how it's taking your energy and, and how it works in general so Uh, it's a constant learning experience. I, the people at the beginning with trans surfing, as I understand it, started just, you know, becoming afraid and they would stay at mm. home and they would stay at home in their houses because they didn't want to be access to the pendulums. Um, you could read it because you know, a lot of Russian writing can be kind of dark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, some of that uh, is for somebody that's reading it could be like, oh, I'm horrified. There's all these pendulums out there. I got to stay home. And, you know, that's not true. Once you become aware of the dynamic of your ability to give energy and take energy and way, the way that works, um, you can, you can um, give energy and also get energy from pendulums at times, as long as you're aware of it and you're not giving your, you know, you're not allowing the pendulum to control your thoughts and behavior. Uh, so it's just about a self-awareness so that, that sort of allows you to to move this self-aware level where you're in, aware of these energetic interchanges. But there's no way, if you're on the ocean, there's no way to avoid the wave. You can mm -hmm. go around it. You can ride the wave. A lot of times people will be in the pendulum. And as as he explains in the book, Reality Transurfing, you, there's no way to avoid it. So you you play the part. Um, you, 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 um, you do the least possible so that, because the pendulum can act against you. As, as if you're involved in you know, certain government structures and societies, um, there's no way out of certain pendulums. So you play the part, you play the role and you get out of it. You, you're aware that you're, you're playing the role in the pendulum and you're not allowing the pendulum to define your goals, your visions, your intentions, where you're moving in the process. So the biggest realization is just an awareness, awareness of where you're giving your energy. Um, and then once you do that, it frees up the energy that you can give and you can be more loving and, 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 and 
offer more service to others when you become aware of this just general energetic dynamic. That's beautiful. So th there is the, 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 way, the way forward. It's just, okay, so people feel, or it seems like people are um, more, well, I think he says this in the book, people are like more aware of what they don't want rather than what they do want. And when you know what you don't want, you're easily manipulated because the pendulums or the, the, these, these mental, uh, these, these thought forms, they can, they can use that to, to scare you into, into going somewhere, right? But the, the thing here is to start learning to ignore those, those kind of uh, dark nudges and starting to focus your time and your energy onto, well, where, where do I want to go? What do I want to be? What would I like my life to be like? And start like structuring or, or writing it down in, on pen and, and paper, starting to, to get a, a clearer picture of, of, of your intention and your, your direction in life. And this requires, I think it requires a lot of faith because when you're in that, in that dark place, uh, the, the pendulum also feels like uh, something safe or something known, you know, it's it like, yeah, oh, here's the evidence for the negative thing. And, and that's enough. It's like the, the dopamine rush or whatever, but right. creating your life is something that's required to have, um, to, to plant new seeds and, and continue with, with habits that, that need to be uh, re repeated regularly. Uh, instead of the negative patterns we have been already repeating regularly since since we were uh, raised, you know, being raised in a society that is kind of crazy, kind of violent, kind of uh, uh, negative in, 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 in some ways, in, in, how, in how the the mainstream is kind of sometimes kind of uh, kind of dark, uh, and we've been raised in in this way of of, of secrecy and and. Um, Mm. And, 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 and selfishness or whatever mm -hmm. so we've been practicing this for so long but now we are starting to recognize and, and thanks to those uh, prophets that you mentioned you know people writing about this a hundred years ago we, we, can, we can read those things and start to apply all of that and start to cultivate new habits absolutely 100% um and so, yeah, the interesting thing about pendulums is that, um, you know, it says in the Transurfing book, it, it can give you energy. It can become addicting. It can give you a little spike of energy. Sometimes the pendulum becomes very good at giving you energy to take energy away. Uh, it's, uh, it's another one of those things. So uh, it's, it, and, and another interesting dynamic with the pendulum is people think they can rule the pendulum. They might become president and they think, I'm the ruler of the pendulum. The pendulum will always destroy you eventually. You will never be in control of the pendulum. So you, you can't put your identity in the pendulum. Mm. But at the same time, um, as you know, you, you've talked to Jim McCarty six times, the, the main focus of the raw material is in when we move into fourth density, we become a social memory complex, which is really a very advanced conscious form of pendulum, meaning that we are aware and awake and become a living group of people that are while individualized in our bodies have access to the akashic where we're all one being these uh, throughout the galaxy there's these advanced societies that move to a certain level that are one being so the phenomenon of pendulums in my idea is start is the beginning stages of eventually moving to a social memory complex, a master pendulum that is over all the other pendulums that um, we are aware of all of our thoughts and actions and together we can do amazing things. We're a living mind, body, spirit, social memory complex. So it, it, I think it's part, the, the, the pendulum um, that we're talking about is just uh, one of the dynamics of the end of third density. Um, as ideas become, we become aware of the movement of ideas and energy within this environment where we are highly creative and, and able to manifest instantaneously. It feels like they are maybe, or as you were speaking, I got this idea, like, like the pendulums are perhaps these manifestations of our own shadows, these manifestations of our own unconsciousness, which mm -hmm. is like I was saying before, so dark, 
uh, that it kind of it has a kind of life of its own because because of not being conscious to us. But as we start moving into fourth density, this we we are bringing into consciousness all of these things and and learning what what the right direction we need to take is for for the the benefit of of all of us and creating a, a kind of a kind of a kind of pendulum i love that we're talking all about pendulums i'm mm -hmm. trying to to like to like not say the word pendulum again but it, it right it's back. fine <laughs> um this this creation or or this inhabiting of of the of the social memory complex you know i, I love the idea of it being also a pendulum but it's like you say a pendulum that's working for us right and, and now re remember uh, the concept that that vadim zeeland is also saying um using like the the swing as a, a metaphor is that if you oppose the pendulum if you're against what how dare they say that these people are all you know you're still giving it energy so it's not just that you support something or that you're on the one side of the conspiracy or whatever. It's whatever energy that you give in resistance or in acceptance. Yeah, it feels like a, like a kind of well that, that you can put any kind of water in it, but you're still yeah. putting water in it. And, and this, this movement into, into, into this collective consciousness that's, that's, been, that's been growing, you know, I, I like how, how you said it. I don't know if I can if I can really re repeat the idea that that came to me when you were speaking. But it's this right. thing of of us creating this or, or 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 birthing this new kind of pendulum that you know the the negative pendulums. It's like sometimes I feel I think okay. So what is the the reality of these pendulums? Are they like we were saying before, like something that's external to us? that we feed or is it actually something that's ours and that because of our unconscious behavior it, it grows but as we right. move into into fourth density as we uh, evolve as a humanity we are starting to feed these things less and we're starting to to move a, a percentage of our energy into this new thing it's probably something that's going to to be happening uh, at, a, at a relatively slow rate at first, but eventually it's going to start snowballing and more and more energy will, that will, will come into, into this new uh, and, uh, and expansive thing that we are creating, I think. Uh, absolutely. Um, what you're saying is true. So uh, the one thing to remember with the law of one and all the other stuff I read is all is within. There is no external so we we have to come to grips with that that the the pendulum and all the thoughts and everything that's occurring is within us it's never external so uh you know it may seem external and there may be ex what seemingly is external in the outside world but still it's all coming from within us mm -hmm. and it could be unconscious or whatever it's always a shadow or a part of us in some way shape or form even if if we don't know anything about it we are all one. So it's some part of a deep psyche, a deep consciousness that is within us. Yeah, I see. And so um, moving, moving a little bit forward, like, okay, we, we, we've established this thing of, of the pendulums and, and their, uh, their, their, their unruly nature, and mm -hmm. their selfish nature. So something that, that I really admire of, of what you're doing is precisely that that you're focusing more on the creation of what we do want you know mm -hmm. informed yeah. by it's not just oh, okay rose color glasses no it's okay there there is this this way that the universe works this this way the mind works that's that's sometimes detrimental but knowing that let's focus on this positive uh, aspect of, of life and let's posit, uh, let's focus on this uh, expansion of our own of our own self. This learning more about who we are, what our power is, and actually the the pendulums they inform us. They inform us about our power. You know, they always talk about oh yeah the 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 what's it called the the Super Bowl halftime rituals or whatever, and 
and what they want is they want to they want you they want to suck your energy because they want so many eyes okay but the important thing there i think is not ah what they are doing to us it's how powerful we are and i think that's the the next um, yeah. focus that we need to get uh, as a, as a collective to really come to grips with how powerful we are and i think this creation of of our own reality is kind of the the, the experiment that will uh, confirm for us this power that we have absolutely true uh, we are all powerful and so when you look at the world if you act like you're um just you know re responding to it a victim of it or whatever or these bad things that are happening um then you don't have any power to change it um the whole world is your creation and as soon as you become aware of that you can change it you can change anything that you see you can protect yourself you are all powerful when you when i say that i know that there's resistance when people say when i say you are all powerful you are god you are you are the creator for many people, because of their religious upbringing or whatever, they they re, they're resistant to that idea. Uh, they think that it's blasphemous. Um, but you can only know this by experience, and on some level, you have to know that the world around you, you created it. You created it from the time that you were born to now. The decisions you made, the people that you chosen to hang out with, and the actions that you've taken, and all your thoughts and actions have created the the place that you're at now. And so that is a wonderful thing because that means, you know, wherever you're at now, you can still change it. Um, some people feel hopeless because of the situation that they're in, or they feel like they haven't been able to change it. Um, and part of that is an underlying belief that they don't have the ability to create or change anything. So a big part of, of this um, teaching is um, embracing the idea that you can create your reality, but more importantly, you already did create your reality. It's not just that you can create your reality in the future, but coming to grips with the fact that you created your reality up to now. And for some people, that's very offensive and that's hard to deal with because this is not my fault. It's so much easier to say, I, did, I had nothing to do. It just one of these things that happened. It was an accident. I was in the back of the car when the accident happened. You know, I, what did I have to do with it? Um, but if you embrace that everything that happens is your fault, even the weirdest accident, almost bizarre thing, then I know that's hard and it's hard to come to grips with and, and, and it's going to be okay. But because guess what? Now that you accept this, you can change it completely and you can have anything you want. Um, and not with a single thought, with a regular change of your overall thoughts on a regular basis, you can have and do anything that you want. When I say that, a lot of people might sit down for a minute or 30 seconds and, and imagine something great and get a smile on their face and then go um, work on and dealing with their bills and then worry about their bills for an hour. And they say, Brian, I said, and you know, I thought about this and I created what I wanted. I used my power, but then I'm having all these bills and all these problems. Um, so how much time did you spend on imagining a free flowing, you know, um, money coming to you in, 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 in that way? Um, how much time did you spend on thinking about your bills and having to pay it? It is not as easy as it sounds. We're talking about living 24 hours a day. We're talking about um, creating with every breath and every blink of our eyes. So it is something that we are learning uh, that is hard, just like the great football player that practices every day. Uh, and when we lock in and finally understand it, then it's not just about us. It is not just about us. We can change the world. So it's not about that million dollars that you're going to have in your bank account or that new car or new house that you're going to get. That's fleeting. It's now you have the power to change the world. You can save people's lives. You can make people's lives better. You can serve them in ways that you, they can't imagine. You can do so many things. You can cure diseases. You can heal people. You can do anything. And when you embrace this power, and, and so a lot of people won't sit for 50, 20, 12 hours a day and really focus on a positive thought because deep down, they're still, because of their past experience, which is how we're raised on a daily basis, there's still an underlying belief that we do not have control over our reality. You, uh, you embrace the philosophy and the idea that you can create your reality, but most of us deep down on a very deep primal level 
have seen the randomness and chaos of the universe and still don't accept entirely. There's got to be something else we got to do. It's more complicated, some ritual or something. But when we truly have faith and embrace that we have the power to create our reality, then suddenly be, it, the question is how, what kind of reality want, do I want to create? Is it just going to be about me and the mansions that I create? Or can you change the world? Can you change reality? You can, you can solve cancers. You can do anything. So when we come together as a group, as a social memory complex, knowing full well the incredible ability of our thoughts to create, we can change the world. We can solve any problem that we have right now. We can solve poverty. We can solve global warming. We can solve any disease. We can do anything. And suddenly we are amazing monsters of love. You know what I mean? It's just this amazing power, superheroes. We can do anything. You know what I mean? It's um, that's it. And, and, and we're at the, we're at the point where we're saying, okay, I kind of get it. My thoughts have kind of created my reality, but I would, I would bet you that um, 99 out of 100 people that are that listen to my channel regularly, they believe it like they're reading a textbook, but they do not believe it deep down. I'm still repeating the same message on a regular basis because I still know that even though what I'm saying every single day, they accept somewhat, but still deep down, they have doubts about it. And that's totally natural. But, you know, Eventually, we're going to break down those limiting beliefs. Eventually, we're going to have a group of people that are thinking together that are changing the world. And I can't wait to see it in my lifetime. Yeah, I, got, I totally see that, that it, it's going to be, it's going to happen very, very much more sooner that, than we think. And totally, I understand people having their doubts. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm one, you know, it's not like, of course. like yeah, I, we I, all <laughs> are, right? We all are, even me, when I'm reading it, and I'm telling you about it, I am aware of the doubts that I have, and I'm working on it every single day. And and when I'm trying to shed my own doubts, I'm doing it, when I'm doing it for me, I'm trying to do it for you too, because I'm aware of it. If I'm aware of it, then that's the same thing that others have, right? So uh, yeah. that that is, I think, place. the point and the, the exercise, while you are like in, in the in this kind of in between zone, the the point is not to like uh, today or tomorrow just have removed all of your doubts, but it's being aware of them and not having them be unconscious and not them being like uh, uh, denying yourself that that you don't have any doubts and 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 falling uh, blindly into a thing, but actually being aware aware and accepting. Of, of those blind spots and those doubts and those um, um, well yeah those doubts and, and being like okay yeah no when I hear this affirmation for example I I feel it but at the same time there is this other feeling with it of doubt right. and and how is it even going to be possible okay allow those things to to exist together and just continue repeating this new process because I think the, the clearest way that I've understood it is how we are um, cultivating new habits. And so the, it's incredible to think like I'm 34. Okay, there's certain habits that maybe I've been habits of, of thinking, you know, and of acting that I've maybe repeated for 34 years unconsciously because I learned them once and I, I just started, it, it became my personality. And it's been creating my reality in that I've been making certain decisions based on thinking those those beliefs and understand thinking that they're true. And then now I'm starting to see, oh, hey, but maybe my reality, I want it to be a little bit different. How can I do that? Okay, let's start uh, planting new seeds and, and cultivating new habits that uh, they, they're going to have to not fight, but compete in a certain way with with those others that happen uh, unconsciously, you know, and they talk about this unconscious part of ourselves. And Vadim Silan talks about how we fall asleep very regularly. And that's that 95% of the time that sometimes they say. And so if there's this like 5% of you that's actually awake and, and doing the, the, the practice, okay, just have faith that it's not, uh, that it's, it's not working or that you're doing anything wrong because there's still doubt is that you are in this transition between how you used to be and how you want to create yourself. And today I, I was watching one video which gave me certain clarity. I think it was, you interviewed her, uh, 
Renee Garcia uh, from, mm -hmm. from the Transurfing stuff. And she mentioned something like, you create your future, or, or what I got from, from what she was saying is that reality creation kind of is that you create your future, but you create it today, just like what you're living today, you created in the past through you, mm -hmm. the way you were acting. So you start creating new uh, habits and new ways of behaving. And of course, it could be that just tomorrow, the things absolutely change and your world changes from one day to the other. But uh, don't necessarily hold your breath for that, but do the, um, the, 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 what's required of you today, knowing that it will bear fruit when, when, when it has to and, and when the fruit naturally uh, uh, blooms or, or, or comes up. What do you think about this? I, I yeah. know there's so much more that I need to learn. No, and, you, and you're, you're a, right. You're a referent for me. So that's why I'm asking you and, and giving you my, my point of view. We're creating the future in the present moment. And what we've created up to now is what we, we created in the past. Um, just like you drink in that water right now. You, 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 you know, it's an action that you took and you drank the water, but you thought about it first. You said, I'm thirsty. And then you drank the water. Um, and then you're drinking the water. And that was a result of the thought you had in the past that you were thirsty and you drank the water. It's very easy to understand. It's, it's really not complicated. And what many people do is they make it more complicated than it is. Um, but we're, we're, we are creating the future right now in the present moment. Um, and it's just a matter of the way we think and act. Action is still an important part. And there is a gap between where we are and where we want to be. And a lot of what we're starting to talk about now is that gap between the the place we're at now and the place we want to be and how we go about thinking and how we go about um, treating our thoughts and actions in a way so that we can create that future. So since we are in that in that point of the conversation, what what comes up for you right now that maybe we could share with with people listening or watching? In, in relation to in mm going to to a very practical thing stepping into the gap okay yeah um the, the the primary thing is for a lot of people if i'm talking to them and they're at a, a place here and they want to move here the reason they're stuck in this place is they have not let go of the past or forgiven themselves for something you're in a habitual sort of behavior and that habitual behavior will continue to create the reality that you're in now everything you're creating is because of the past so a lot of times it's just a whole cloud of the past, past behaviors, past learnings, past teachings, past things. And so for you to really jump the gap into the place that you want to be, it, it initial process really is about letting go of the past, determining the things that are keeping you in your current present reality. And a lot of times that's things that you did when you were a child, things that you haven't forgiven yourself for, things that you maybe haven't deserved, ideas or understandings that you have about the world. So if you can sit in this present moment, and it's a fun exercise, and just simply assume that all the stuff that happened in the past are just memories, like you're in a program, but really you just entered into your body right now in this moment. And the only thing that you think, you think you know all that stuff in the past, but that's only part of the game. The game is you're, you're now in this moment and you have all these memories of the past but the game is how can you change the future? So um, if you knew it was a game and you knew the memories were just, just a part of the game and not real, then you would immediately just kind of ignore those thoughts about the past. And then you would start doing stuff for the future. But a lot of times we take that stuff in the past as more of a reality than what we're actually moving towards in the future. We think about the past so often that it becomes creative for our future. It becomes a part of our reactions. The way we react to things become a result of what has happened to us in the past. So a lot of this is letting go of the past, letting go of our past beliefs and understandings in order to move from that gap to where we are now to where we want to be. I like that, the idea of thinking it like a game and, and like the, the challenge of the game, and instead of like jumping from one platform to the other or whatever, the challenge is, okay, you're given this kind of this deck of cards, you know, like, right. oh, this happened to me, uh, the world is this way, or et cetera. You're mm -hmm. given this, this hand and, and the game is, okay, how can you with this hand that you were given plus 
the present moment that you, the, the opportunities that are allowed in the present moment, how can you uh, create a, a new hand uh, and not have this, this past hand be a, um, an obstacle for you, but rather how can you transform those cards into, into positive plays that, that help you move forward, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, so if you treat it like a game and you treat your past as simply part of the game, um, how can you take whatever it is? So, hey, you gave yourself a big challenge. That means you're going to get more points when you um, level up to the next level. Um, so if you seem like the whole world's crazy, that means that maybe that's a greater opportunity to, to have even a greater transformation. So the key element is forget about it. The past has nothing to do with where you're going in the future. And if you can let the past go, especially in determining in your belief system as to what is possible, um, then everything opens up for you. A lot of people don't believe they deserve to have money or they deserve to have whatever it is. They deserve to have the things. A lot of people don't believe it's possible because they, they view possibility as what they've already experienced, which is natural. We've seen it. We've done it a million times. So we expect to understand the world from this possibility. So um, I, I do think that it's, it's about that, that the, there's a lot more of obviously to it, to taking action, to doing the things you want, but really it's about letting go of the, the past and, and treating the past like a game. Take the good experiences. There's some good experiences you've had in the past that you can empower, it give you, they have feelings that you've experienced in the past that you can pull from and say, I had this exhilarating experience. I want that feeling again. And then you can say, um, you try to go into your body and remember that amazing feeling. You've had grateful experiences. Bring up that gratitude. Use the past like a toolbox and bring the positive emotions in and the positive things and forget about the negative. You know what? Actually, try to, just like we remember the past, we are, we are so used to like uh, this feeling of the future, of, the, of time moving uh, forward, right? That we mm -hmm. think, okay, yeah, the past happened and it's the cause of the present. But just in the same way as we remember the past and, and, and draw like conclusions and beliefs from it, we should start looking at the future and drawing conclusions and beliefs from that. So like, okay, uh, this happened, therefore I can't or I don't deserve or whatever. But instead, mm -hmm. okay, I, this is going to happen, therefore I deserve and, and it's going to happen. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Perfectly said. You got it. That's exactly the point. That's how to play the game. Yeah, like not thinking of, of the future as something that hasn't happened yet, but thinking of it just the same way that we think about the past, you know? Okay, exactly. th this thing has already happened and, and, and therefore that means, and therefore my belief is that I deserve and that I, You're right. that, this is great. This is a, a beautiful unlock for me thinking of the, because it's hard to, to imagine. We are so locked into this kind of, it's not really scientific because, but, but it's kind of scientistic or materialistic way of, of looking at, at things. But, you know, from, from, from my own experience, and uh, I, I already know that everything is happening at once, you know, but you know those moments when you get this, this little extra clarity and you're like, oh, okay, now, now I get something else, you know, and, and you just did that for right. me with, with the thing about the future and the past. Cool. Um, well, Brian, you're a very busy guy. You're a very, a very uh, generous guy as well. I really love that that uh, I got this this second opportunity to speak with you uh, so long after the first one. Look, this is gonna be maybe like episode seventy three or seventy four around there, and you were guest number nine. Ah, well, that that's great, and you have to. Have, well, let's talk again sooner. Um, I know it took me a long time. You were trying to reach me on, and we kept on missing each other. So I'm super glad that we finally connected, man. It's always good to talk to you, brother. Thank you for supporting the reality revolution. I see you making comments and I appreciate your support. I really do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's really like this, this wonderful, beautiful community, you know, even though it I really is, I, I don't know if, I mean, you, you do have a, a Facebook group mm -hmm. and, um, Maybe you want to share it. Uh, what else you you, you have as, as far as like community goes? But I'm more like when when I get the, the premieres on YouTube, I, I go on 
and I, I maybe talk a, a few minutes with people or or I just yeah. there's some some reflection that comes to me and I just leave a comment and and it's, it's like you, you look at, at all the comments all the people are like so positive it's amazing that it, it really it's so exciting it's um, the greatest thing that has come yeah. from my channel is this wonderful family yeah. that has started to form a, a safe place where people can feel positive and secure and they know that they're going to get a hopeful message and um every day people come together on the facebook group welcome to the reality revolution and on on youtube and it, you know it's 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 wonderful and and i love that and so um you know definitely you know join the group and join me on on youtube and um and uh join the family uh, we're all one family it's not about just me on this channel it's it's a movement we are a movement we are the social memory complex coming together forming in real time we're seeing it we're seeing the new earth we're the catalyst for the new earth it's happening now you if you don't believe it you got to check it out it's happening it's amazing it's so exciting yeah well for sure um yeah and i'm really happy to to be a part of it in, in my own way you know with with uh, the information that I share here on this channel and absolutely the, thank you yeah, yeah the, the, the comments on on your show um and well I, I want to thank everybody for being there I hope this conversation has has helped uh, enlighten a little bit more your understanding of your place in in this universe in, in uh, the place in your own life and and what what positive can you can you draw from from whatever happened to you in your past. And oh, before we close, let me ask you one question that I'm starting to ask everybody at sure. the end. What is the one thing that brought you to where you are? Love. <laughs> That's Love brought me where I am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. All right, brother. Okay, everybody. So you can uh, check me out here on, on YouTube or you can find me on Instagram. You can uh, message me if you want at Atman Rafa and i um, very happy that you guys were there and uh, continue following these great adventures and go, go find Brian on the Reality Revolution. Um, well, thank you everybody so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>